seated. It is a delight to have you all in worship here this morning, and those of you who are joining us online, just grateful to be together in worship. Uh, That is probably the first time in at least six months since we've heard the organ. Praise, that's a, there you go. Yeah, it still works. Good to know. I know that that's, that it's a little touch and go sometimes over here with the organ, and so we fired it up, and it works. Grateful for that. And I heard some voices out here, too. I heard some singing out here as well. And we're excited to be able to to sing together in worship this morning. Um, It's good to be with you all, even on this rainy day as we find ourselves in here. We've got some extra umbrellas in here uh, as well this morning. Just a few announcements before we move on and continue in worship. Uh, The first one is this, uh, Wednesday mornings. uh, We are looking for a Wednesday morning volunteer to take that post. Uh, We have Rachel Watson, who is in the office now, and she's looking for assistance on Wednesday mornings. So if you're looking for an opportunity to serve and you feel comfortable coming into the office uh, between, I think, 9 and 1 o'clock, this is uh, a, a time slot for you on Wednesdays. Uh, And if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to Rachel. Um, Just as a reminder, we do have other in-person ministries that are happening. Obviously, family and children's ministry is is happening. It's a little nuanced. It's social distance, and it's a little bit different than it has been experienced in years past. Uh, But it is happening. I know the sewing ministry is gathering on Thursdays. uh, So I know Peggy would want to share with you and invite you to come back. Uh, They also are social distanced. Uh, And there are fewer of them, uh, but they're still doing God's work in that place. And I know it's always an awesome time of fellowship as well. It's always a good time to visit with them. And then the last announcement, well, actually I have two announcements. Uh, This one kind of takes everything, and that is that Baby Bottoms has been born. I don't know how many times I could say that fast, uh, but that is Isabel Lynn Bottoms the newest member of the family of our youth director, Matt, Matthew Bottoms, was born, uh, when, was, when was she born? I'm asking my wife, because I, you know, we, I just know she was born. I'm trying to, rem- yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, one of those days, I can't recall, but uh, she's been born, and uh, we're just going to tease you with this. If you haven't been on Facebook and haven't seen pictures yet, you'll see it next Sunday. This is the tease, just to let you know that this is a, a celebration. She's been born. We're excited about that. Um, and so we will have an opportunity to, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Praise be to God. This is good news. I'm sure that they're tuning in if, they, if they're awake, you know, <laughs> depending upon how last night went, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but we want them to know that we love them. And so we'll have an opportunity to pray for them uh, in particular uh, later on in the service. And then the last announcement is this. Today is Communion Sunday, uh, which over the last six months has been very different uh, because when we haven't been gathered together here, you have been encouraged to do something that we have never practiced in the United Methodist Church, something that we have said that we don't practice, which is virtual communion that you at home are to, that if you did not find your way uh, to the church office and pick up the little communion kits, the little individual pre-wrapped kits, that you would at this time find your way into um, 
your pantry and find some juice, some crackers, something suitable so that you might partake with this body here as we partake of this body here. Uh, hopefully, as you all came in here, you picked up uh, communion. If you didn't, you can certainly get one at, at another portion of the service, um, but we also will be partaking in the communion here. I'll be, be sure to be masked up. I'll be handling all of it myself and John as well, and uh, we'll be partaking in communion in a very safe way, in a very special way this morning. So uh, it's with all of that that we go to God in prayer and invite him into the space even as we invite him into our space and our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious God, we just give you thanks. We give you thanks that even through the, the rain that your church has gathered here, some are still just getting up this morning and they are finding their way to the couch and finding their way to the kitchen table, whatever it might be, Lord. And God, that you are gathered with them there as well. And so God, we just give you thanks and praise that you are able to be all places at all times to all peoples. And God, we just want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ above all names, above all kingdoms. We want your kingdom first here on earth as it is in heaven. So God, we give you thanks. Would you receive our praise this morning? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand. The word of the Lord says, where two or three are gathered in Jesus' name, he is there. And we know that Jesus is amongst us. on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. It looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, that's what my father does. journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure won't refine
check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Amen. His word says the following. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. Every battle, through every heartbeat, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my hiding place. That fits right in line with what we were talking about last week, doesn't it? You all may be seated just for a moment. Yeah, we, uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That all would come through Jesus and receive the faith, receive the life. Such a good word. Of course, I ask you all to sit down, and then you're like, Kevin, we're, aren't we doing the Apostles' Creed? And of course, this is, see, this is your pastor. I get lost in worship a little bit sometimes, and I hope that you, you receive that as a good thing, that I am just, oh, I'm just in worship sometimes. You know, this is not like a, a show that, like we put on for like an hour. We're just worshipers, just, just coming to the Father in worship. And so sometimes you got to put up with a pastor who's just a little bit lost in the moment. And so with that, would you all stand as we recite 
the Apostles' Creed. And, and, and you know, some of the conversations that we've, I've had with members of our church over the last six months, because we've had a blended worship, I, I know that it's not for all people. I know that it's not. Because some, some prefer hymns, some prefer praise and worship. One would rather have the other without the other. I, I get it. I understand. Songs like the ones that we just sang, where we sing the same thing a hundred times. There's a reason why we sing it a hundred times. Why do we sing it a hundred times? It takes the hundredth time for me to get it. I mean, it, it, it just does. Sometimes I go, why am I singing this for a hundredth time? Oh, now I get it. It's almost like a liturgy. It's just set to drums and a guitar. It's okay. Same for the other side of the hymns. So, our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now you may be seated. Amen. I said that I wanted to uh, pray for Isabel, Isabel Lynn Bottoms, our newest soon-to-be member of the church. I suppose she, she kind of, she's kind of married into it. She's kind of by, by family. But I also want, wanted to just read this prayer um, about Christian love. And this would kind of open up our prayer time, and then um, I would just offer some words in addition to this, and we would close out with the Lord's Prayer, as we have been as well. So would you hear these words and uh, bow your heads and hearts as we pray together? O oh, lover of the loveless, it is your will that I should love you with heart and soul and mind and strength and my neighbor as myself. But I am not sufficient for these things, Lord. There is by nature no pure love in my soul. Every affection in me is turned from you. I am bound as slave to lust. I cannot love you, lovely as you are, until you set me free. By grace, I am your free man and would deserve you, for I believe you are my God in Jesus, and that thou that through him I am redeemed and my sins are forgiven. With this freedom, I would obey you, but I cannot walk in liberty any more than I could first attain it of myself. May your spirit draw me nearer to you in your ways. You are the end of all means. And if you lead me to you, I pray I do not go away empty. Order all my ways by your holy word, and make your commandments the joy of my heart, that by them I may be happy and happy converse with you. May I grow in your love and manifest it to mankind everywhere I go. Spirit of love, make me like the loving Jesus. Give me his benevolent temper, his beneficent actions, that I may shine before men to your glory. Lord, we are praying for a holy love. We are praying to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. That is our desire in this place, beyond all things. Beyond all the, the names that we would lift up in prayer, we are desiring to be more like your son, Jesus, to be lovers of you. And because you love us, that we might love others in this world. And so, God, we do lift up baby Isabel. We lift her up to you that she might, through her parents' wisdom and guidance, that she would come to know you. We look forward to the day that she might find her place within these walls, that she might come to be baptized in the name Jesus. We just pray a blessing over that family. God, we give you thanks 
for hearing our prayers, for uniting us in them. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, and we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Father again. again. 
Amen. In case you all hadn't noticed, the Andaras have officially taken over the platform up here. And I mean that in the best possible way. It's a good thing. Or I could say the Davids have too. Because we have, we have three, I don't know if you all noticed, we had three, three of the four up here were David. It's a good thing. What a blessing it is to have as talented and gifted, and most importantly, people who love Jesus leading us in worship. Just grateful for that. And just so you all know, we, we, do have, uh, we do have plans in place to, uh, to find room for choir here. We do have plans in place to, continue to, to have more uh, members of the band return uh, as they feel comfortable. It hasn't been a plan to not have them up here. It was for a little while, obviously, for safety measures, uh, but we're continuing to kind of ebb and flow into this time of uh, just an abundance of safety, uh, but wanting to enter into worship. So thank you for bearing with us as we kind of figure this out together. So our scripture this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, and it is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. If you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you to open those now. And hear God's word to us. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. You know, with, with all the lack of unity that we are seeing in the world, seeing in the country, seeing in the church, capital T, capital C, the church, within probably within our church as well, and we just don't see it because we're not all together as much, uh, I just found myself looking for Scripture, you know, not cherry-picking, but looking for Scripture that would, would speak to unity, would speak to oneness, would speak to cohesion and harmony and solidarity, because it's just been really difficult, probably beyond everything else in 2020 that, is, that has thrown at us. It's been, the, it's been the division that has been the hardest thing to kind of see and witness and experience, and, and we've been on the front lines of it for six six plus months now. And I, I say, I say uh, front lines, and that's probably not a good term. There are others who have been much closer to di disunity than, uh, than all of us. Um, mainly this gentleman here, uh, the first slide that we have. Yeah, he was on the front lines of disunity very, very close this past week. That's the front lines of disunity. And I'm not getting political here with this. It's just a little lighthearted moment to say, I love my job, and I would not do that job. That is for sure. That is a tough task for Chris Wallace. He's throwing his hands up in the air. That's what you see him doing there. Um, I watched all of three minutes of the debate, and I, and I had to turn it off. But uh, we're, we're going to dive into the scripture today uh, that I just read. But I also thought that we might just have a little fun with it, too. So I thought about a few things that we probably disagree on. Uh, and I won't put anything as polarizing as, you know, our, our two candidates up there. I'm not going to do a show of hands for that. We're not going to do that here this morning. Uh, but here are some things that we have various opinions on. And I would just love to see, and, and you all can participate at home in the comments as well. This is a highly participatory service today. So what's the first one here? All right, Coke versus Pepsi. All right, Coke, raise your hand. Pepsi. Okay, it's mostly Coke here. I don't know where it's going to be online. We'll see. All right, next one. Starbucks versus Dunkin' Donuts. Now, you may say neither, but just pick one. So, Starbucks, raise your hand. Dunkin' Donuts, raise your hand. Yeah, we got a lot of New Englanders here, too. So, yeah, I, I get that. This is bold versus less bold. I get it. Yep. Okay, chocolate versus vanilla. So, chocolate, raise your hand. 
Vanilla? Okay, vanilla's winning the day on that one. Okay, very good. Cats or dogs? Okay, so uh, cats, raise your hand. Uh, five, six, dogs. Oh, dogs. Yeah, dogs all day is winning that one. Yeah, I see two hands raising, raising up there. Uh-huh, that's right. I'll take them both, especially these two. All right, Girl Scout cookies. Samoas, Thin Mints, Tagalongs, and Dosi Dos. All right, Samoas. Okay, those, yeah. Y'all are, I'm making y'all hungry with all this food, right? Thin Mints. Okay, y'all are, I see multiple hands raising up. You're just raising your hand for everything. You're like, yes, please. The answer is yes, Kevin. Uh, Tagalongs. Okay, a couple of y'all. Dosi Dos. I'll be honest, I don't even know what a Dosi Do is, right? <laughs> but I'll, a Girl Scout cookie stops at the house. The, or, the, the order is yes. The, that's the answer. All right, what else do we have here? Do we have any other ones? Okay, now this is a little bit different. Y'all know what this movie is, what, what this is from? This is Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie? <laughs> it's always on at Christmas. People are like, no, that's not a Christmas movie, Kevin. It's always on during Christmas. It's about, anyways, okay. All right, let me see a different one. There's a, okay, is it ant like the insect or aunt like aunt? So ant, who says ant? All right, who says aunt? Okay, ants are winning here, I think it looks like. And hopefully you are participating at home, too. Okay, hot dog. Is this a sandwich? Raise your hand if this is a sandwich. It meets all the qualifications, but for whatever reason, we don't want to call it a sandwich. Y'all are like, you're crazy, Kevin. Not only are you crazy for thinking that's a sandwich, you're crazy for doing what we're doing right now. Okay. Oh, okay, so this is the next section. All right, we don't disagree on everything. Those were the things that we might disagree on. These are the things that we don't disagree on. Um, an eel always looks like uh, somebody, like he just told a joke and he's waiting for a punchline. There's no disagreeing on that. Okay, that's, that's, just, that's just true. Um, what else do we not disagree on? When you get to heaven, you are going to ask God, what's the purpose of a mosquito? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's a reason, I, I suppose. So we're probably going to ask that. We agree on that. Okay, and this one. Y'all recognize what this is from? What movie is it from? Titanic. Y'all know what I'm going to say, right? Everyone knows that there was more than enough room for Leo on that board, right? Couldn't she have scooted over, right? Everybody agrees on that. She let him freeze. Okay, all right. All right, so that's all. I think that's, that's probably all of our things. Yes, okay, very good, very good. Thanks for amusing, uh, dealing with my amusement through that. All jokes aside, today is World Communion Sunday, and I know that doesn't mean much to most of you. Uh, It is the first Sunday of the month, which means that we are going to participate in communion, but it's more than that. It's World Communion Sunday, which means that uh, one day every every year uh, in October, uh, we remember that even within our Christian faith, while we have differences, there is one day where we celebrate a faith that is not unique to our nation. There's, this is not a faith that, um, that is just for us. It encompasses the entire world. And with that perspective, we also recognize that at the foot of the cross and at the foot of the communion table, which is extended, uh, all are welcome and all are declared uh, equal, which is something that we have not been able to say with a unified voice in these polarizing uh, pandemic days. And so, if you have your Bibles, uh, open those back up to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And depending upon um, what version of Bible you read from, I I have here this morning, I'm I'm using the NRSV, New Revised Standard Version, and I appreciate that it begins with this word, this word, therefore. Therefore. I've talked about this word before, right? When every time you see therefore in the Bible, you have to ask what the therefore is there for, right? And so therefore is this major pivot that Paul uses throughout all of his letters. And therefore means that whatever I'm saying now has to reflect backwards on what I said. And so really this is literally a pivot right down the middle of Ephesians. You have chapters 1, 2, and 3, pivot, right there in the beginning of verse of chapter 4, and then 4, 5, 6, 
And so it's almost like therefore is reflecting back on the first half, and here's the second half. Um, Therefore means that Paul is referring to what he has just shared the first three chapters. The first three chapters, Paul has just shared the gospel story. He's talking to this church in Ephesus, and he's presented the gospel, and he's talking about grace, he's talking about peace, he's talking about, uh, about the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and that it is still alive and active and real and tangible for every single person who would receive it, to not only live transformed lives, individual lives, but to have a transformed community of faith. And so Paul presents the gospel to this very diverse community of Gentile believers. He's speaking to the Gentiles, and they're coming from all walks here. And he says, all that I've just told you, all of it's true, and you believe it, so therefore you should live in a particular way. And Paul is saying, if you believe the gospel story that you just heard your story, if you believe in the gospel story, then your story should be impacted in a particular way. Paul moves from the gospel message to the gospel mission. So I begin with verses 1 through 3. Um, I know we haven't even gotten past the first word there in, in therefore, right? I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Look, I know that we said we were going to dive into this, but there's a little bit more housekeeping I have to do before we dive in. Um, it's the ninth word up here. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's the ninth word up there, church? You, right? The ninth word is you. Who is Paul talking to? Is he talking to you? Or 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 is he talking? He's not. This is... Again, there's a reason why we go back to the original language, because then there's a little tiny nuance which ends up to be a big thing. Because we receive things individually a lot. We go, oh, he's speaking to, to me, right? This is an individual, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about. This is not for you. This is for, and I'll use my best Italian accent here, right? This is for yous. This is for yous. All of yous, all right? That's, this is plural. This is for the church. He's speaking of the church. Um, whenever you think it looks like a singular pronoun, it's really a second person, a plural pronoun. Everything is addressing the church as a whole. And, and so now we'll get into the meat of this. Paul is encouraging the church. Actually, he's begging the church to lead a life worthy of their calling. And you're, you might be asking yourself, what does a life worthy of the calling look like? Thank you for asking that, by the way. Um, it looks like a unified life. It looks like we are unified in the Spirit. We've talked a lot about division. What are we unified in? And, and again, I want to say something that is, you're going to receive this. You're going to be like, Kevin, you are so, you are so un-American, right? I'm going to say something. You're going to think I'm un-American. I'm not un-American, all right? But here's what we do sometimes as Americans think. Our society places a lot of pride in our individualized sense of personhood. We focus a lot on ourselves more so than our communities necessarily. Sometimes it's something that we do. And some of that's really good, right? We have the freedom to be individuals, praise be to God. We have the freedom to believe what we want. We have the freedom to practice what we want. We are encouraged to have personal responsibility in ourselves. And there's a lot of good that comes with how we Americans think as individuals. But the way that we think about discipleship, we are at a disadvantage because we get things a little bit mixed up here. Because if the way that I understand the New Testament, what Jesus calls us is not individually. Following Jesus is not a solo sport. It, it, it never has been. It never will be. It's a team sport. Discipleship to Jesus is either remarkably uh, and profoundly relational to others, or it's not discipleship at all. I mean, I, I, it feels like I'm overstating something, but I'm, I'm, I'm really not. Um, our discipleship, our following Jesus, assumes that while we are in a relationship with God, we are also in a relationship with, with, with one another. Jesus kind of makes this clear. He says, if you love one another, you're in love with me, and vice versa. You can't go, forsake the world, let it all burn. It's just about you and me, God. Uh-uh. 
That's, that you, we, we cannot do that. Jesus says, no, that's not an option for you. It assumes that if you are seeking to be unified with the Father, that we are also seeking to be unified within one another as brothers and sisters in the church. And so Paul says that we are, are called to be unified. And he says that in order for that to happen, it's going to take these things. He says humility. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, right? The, the, the mind of Jesus, right? The descent of humility. It's going to take humility. It's going to take gentleness. Boy, we have not been very gentle over the last six months in some ways. It's going to take patience. You know, I, my prayer all the time is, Lord, give me patience right now. You know, it's one of those sort of things, right? Um, and, and forbearance in love. That's what Paul says. In church, uh, unity is hard. You know, unity is, is difficult because unity, and this is the next slide, unity does not mean uniformity. It does not mean that we all think exactly alike. It does not mean that if you had a personal walk or if you had a different circumstance in your life that all of that is negated and just you stop being the individual person that you are, all of that is just washed and just whitewashed. No, no, no. That's not what unity is, and that's not what this means. Each of us have been created in the image of God. Each of us has. Um, but, y'all, if you have a neighbor, I guess everybody in some ways here has a neighbor, I encourage you to look at your neighbor, and it might be somebody who you came here with, it might be somebody across the aisle, but turn to them and say, you're different. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that, do you? <laughs> all right? Guess what? It's, it's okay, because it's coming back to you. All right? Everybody goes, you're different. Guess what? You're different too. That's a good thing, right? We don't like saying that because we're like, oh my gosh, Kevin, you just made me say that somebody's different. It's not a bad thing. That's not what this text says. It does not say that differences are bad. God has made us as individuals and we need to celebrate our diversity. In fact, our church, we need more diversity. But here's what Paul is saying. We are called to celebrate our diversity within a unified body. But Paul reminds us that it's going to take a lot of work. It's hard. So everybody say this. Making every effort. Making every effort. Let's be real. Quite often when I see the disunity in the church, it's not because every effort was made to keep that unity. Um, never mind every effort. It's, it's sometimes it's like no effort was made. Making every effort. Some of y'all, even as I say making every effort, ever as I talk about unity, you might even be getting defensive within yourself because you're thinking of a particular run-in with a person at the church. You're thinking of a circumstance that was difficult. You're thinking of a challenging moment where your faith coincided with what was happening to you in real life, right? And you're going, well, I, I know what I made. I made every effort. I don't know if that person made every effort. Right? That's what you might be thinking within yourself. Well, there's another phrase that Paul uses in Romans 12, and he's talking about being at peace and being unified, and he says this other jewel of a phrase. He says, as far as it depends on you. As far as it depends on you. As far as it depends on me, right? There's these three phrases. I was talking to John this past week over here, and we were talking about this last one at the bottom. Whatever happens, because we talked about this two weeks ago, that if you go through life and you go, keep the peace, love others, Seek unity. When do I do those things? Well, whatever happens. Whatever happens in every instance. That those, that's, those are our marching orders. That's what we're to do. But some of these are other just key phrases that we might have, Lord, burn them into our minds. Make every effort. Can I make every effort? Yeah. I mean, we are people of grace. We understand that God is going to do what God's going to do, and we depend on his grace on everything we do. And so we kind of shy away from the word effort because it seems like we're earning things. seems like we're we're trying to strive towards holiness. That's not what it is. You've received it in grace through Jesus Christ. But we can make every effort to seek peace, to seek to be unified. And then this other phrase, as far as it depends on you. You, you, you can't be both sides, but you can be one side, and you can do one of these two sides. And so we continue reading as Paul goes on about unity, four through six. He says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, 
through all and in all. Okay, church, so I said this was a participatory sermon, so you have some more participating to do. Uh, raise your hand if you are a college football fan. It's very difficult for a Bulls fan to say that these days because I don't know what sport we're playing. We're not playing football, but um, it could be the Bulls, it could be the Gators, it could be the Knolls, it could be the Hurricanes. It, it could even be that, that, that team that's down I-4 in Orlando. Uh, you could even be a fan of whatever team that is. Um, maybe you have, you're from a different state. But whatever it is, whatever your team is, I want in three seconds, I'm going to say three, two, one, and you're going to, you're going to say that team name out, the mascot. Okay? You all got it in your minds? Okay, ready? Three, two, one, Bulls. Did you say Rocky? <laughs> yeah, he went literally with the mascot. Okay, I'm, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I, I called it the wrong thing. All right, I heard a lot of different things out there. All right, that was not a unified voice. All right, let me, let me change it up. Um, same participation, but we're going to go with Christian denominations. Now, obviously, we are in a United Methodist Church right now, but some of y'all didn't, you weren't born into this denomination. You came from a different denomination. And so whatever that is, it might be Catholic, it might be Southern Baptist, it, it, it might be Church of the Nazarene. It, you might say, Kevin, I wasn't raised in the faith, okay? Whatever it is, you could say none. Whatever it is, I'm going to say three, two, one, and we're all going to say it at the exact same time. Y'all ready? Three, two, one, Catholic. I heard Lutheran. I heard a few different ones there. You heard my saying Catholic, and it sounded like a mess because we're all from different walks, right? All right, let me try something else. I want everyone here to shout out the name in which, in which every knee will bow. I want you to shout out the name in which, in which every tongue will will confess. Y'all ready? Three, two, one, Jesus. Boy, that sounded good. That sounded like the church, unified. You hear the difference between what we started with and what we ended with? We may not agree on college football. We may not agree uh, in the upbringing in the faith. But we agree on the name of Jesus Christ. You know, there are supposedly 20,000 different denominations of the Christian faith. 20,000. Started with one, now has turned into 20,000 different denominations worldwide. And I know it might sound naive for me to say this, but there's one Jesus. And we are united in, in him. I already said this anti-American comment, right, about individuality, right? You're going to think, well, what else are you going to say, Kevin? I'm going to say something that is anti-Methodist, Okay. Uh, now, clearly, I'm not anti-Methodist as a United Methodist pastor, um, but I said this last week, Jesus is not Methodist, right? He's not. He's not Southern Baptist. He's not Catholic. He's Jesus. He's Jesus. And this might be, um, you know, years ago, someone was complaining to me about these 20,000 different denominations, and, and he said this to me. He said, Jesus is returning to marry his church, and he's looking for a bride, not a brothel. That's a hard word. That's a tough word to be hearing. And for the longest time, I struggled with the idea of 20,000 different denominations. Going, that's not right. We need one church. We need one bride. We need to be unified. But upon further thought over the last few years, I've thought, what, what would I get upset about? The 19,999 that weren't correct because they weren't in my denomination? Is, is that what I would be upset about with the 20,000? I mean, in Jesus' day, they didn't argue whether or not you were in the right denomination. They said, are you a, a follower of Jesus or are you the follower of John? Right? John was baptizing before Jesus was. But what did John say? He said, I'm unfit to untie his sandals. You follow Jesus. Later on, uh, the, the argument was whether or not you were a follower or a disciple of Paul or Apollos or Peter, and they had these arguments, and they said, which one do you follow? And they sorted that out, and they said, we follow Jesus. And they sorted that out, and then they started arguing over Jew or Gentile, and then they figured that out, and they started arguing over race and creed and color, 
And here in this passage that we read today, Paul is addressing a very diverse community, and he's pointing to their differences, their faith upbringings, their cultural backgrounds, the color of their skin, their socioeconomic statuses, their gender, their age, the power dynamics between them and their, the, the level of freedom that they have. He's addressing all of these with this diverse community. And Paul is saying, whatever your starting point was, Jew, Gentile, slave-free, man or woman, black, African, brown, Middle Eastern, or white European, you have a new identity in Christ. A brand new identity. You, get, you start over. It doesn't negate what you are. We celebrate everybody. But you have a new identity in Christ. So much of what, uh, what we understand biblically isn't just... It's just our identity. It's about my identity. No, no, no. It's about yous, right? It's about yous. It's about our identity as the church, about a collective church as one. And I promise this is going to be the last thing that I ask you all to, to read with me, uh, but I want to read it unified. I want to read this together. So let's read this together, church. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. Sounds so good when we are unified. We are a beautiful church when we are united, when we are one, but we are an ugly church when we are divided and we do not agree on some core things. One of those things being the very thing we come to celebrate today, unity on World Communion Sunday. One of the very simplest statements that comes out of the Book of Discipline of the United Methodist Church states this, we affirm all persons as equally valuable in the sight of God. That comes straight out of our book of discipline. And it's such the most basic statement. It almost doesn't say anything. Of course we affirm all people of equal worth. That's such a simple statement. And yet at the same time, because we're in this uber political season that we can't even say that simple statement. We feel like we're divided even on that really, really think that simple thing. We affirm all persons as equally valuable in God's eyes. Of course, that's the case. You know, many of the headlines this week surrounded this idea of, of denouncing white su supremacy. And here I am, preparing for the sermon, knowing for a month now that I was going to be preaching Ephesians 4 on unity, knowing that we would be celebrating World Communion Sunday, uh, a day that, that many mainline churches like the United Methodist Church stand to celebrate unity and equality across diversity. And, and, and Here's the deal, church. I, I don't want to denounce white supremacy because I'm supposed to. I want to celebrate unity and equality because those are the things that are the framework of our faith. That's who we are because we are unified in Christ. It is a new creation. Those things are obvious. They're given. It's a core understanding for those who are new creations in Christ. For those who have a new identity in Christ, we're blessed to be able to see at least a little bit through Jesus' eyes, at least a little bit through God's eyes, and we go, oh, yeah, equal value. I see that. Absolutely. But I don't want to say those things in the context that they would be taken as politicized. That cheapens the words because it's a much bigger deal than politics. It's a much bigger deal than the election that's coming up. For me, there is literally 0% of my saying those words that connect to one political party or another. It has nothing to do with that for me. It may for you, it does not for God, and it does not for me. I can assure you that this, way is, this issue is way more important than this year's election. Again, for us in Christ Jesus, those who are united as one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, for us, it's not about politics. It's about this. It's not about this kingdom. It's about God's kingdom. That's what we press on for. That's the challenge to us, is that we don't put one kingdom over another. Truth be told, I look forward to the middle of 2021 when some of the fog is cleared from election and some of the fog is cleared from 2020. Things are not going to be perfect. But some of the fog will be clear that we can have an honest conversation and it doesn't have to be politicized that we can talk a little bit about race issues because that's discipleship. That's just what we do. We do that if there's no race issues. And I'm not even pointing out to things that may or may not be uh, race issues. You can do that. Right? I'm not necessarily going to say what is what, but I think at the end of the day, we, we, can, be able to, we can say that racism is sin. That's a standard thing for us to say. 
and it has nothing to do with politics and everything to do with, with our faith. Uh, I look forward to an ongoing conversation. Even more importantly than conversation, I look forward to an ongoing mission and ministry. Not just words. Those are just words. Simple words. Basic words. They seem like they're polarizing. They're really not. It's very, very simple. And actually find common ground with people and be able to work through growing God's kingdom here. That's what I look forward to. I think that many of you all do too. In the meanwhile... We are affirming that all persons as equally valuable in the sight of God by celebrating World Communion Sunday here at this table where the Lord Jesus sets a table and he sets one that is big enough for all people. That's what we celebrate on World Communion Sunday, the table set for all people. That is, that's what's awesome about the cross. It's level at the ground. And that's what's awesome about communion. That is a table of grace and is a table of mercy and compassion and forgiveness and love. And so, we're going to find our way to the table this morning, and let me uh, pray for us before we go to that table. Heavenly Father, each individual in this place, Lord, is formed in your likeness. And Lord, you've called us your sons and your daughters for those of us who have decided to not only believe, but follow your son, Jesus. And so, Lord, we seek to grow in our individual walks with you, and we seek to be discipled by you. But I pray that, you, that we would come to understand that there are many others walking a similar path to us, but maybe with different upbringings and different backgrounds and different and nuanced understandings of the faith. I pray, Lord, that this community would journey together, regardless of our differences, and at the same time that we would celebrate our differences. Lord, help us to grow closer to one another as we grow closer to you. And all God's people said together in unity, amen, amen. So this morning, um, we are going to be celebrating communion a little bit in a different way. We're going to see how this works because we are partaking in this meal. And so we'll see how this works with a mask on. I should have practiced. Ooh, that doesn't work. Okay. I'm going to have to do all my talking without this on. And then we will go over it. Should have practiced that ahead of time. I apologize. So it'll be a little bit different. Some of you all, as you came in, you received an individualized portion cup. Uh, some of you all said, no, I'm, I'm going to have this cup here. And when I say this cup, it's going to be an individual cup that is perfect for you. But you're going to have from this one loaf that I will uh, give to you as well. Uh, you can choose either one. For those of you who are home, you're gathering your communion elements now. They're before you. And uh, we, I just want you to know we're, continuous, we're, we're still continuing to practice very safely. Obviously, you see me putting gloves on. I've been watching other United Methodist churches throughout our, our district, throughout our uh, community doing this for a couple months now, those who have been uh, gathered. I know it's a little bit different. This is how we love one another. We find some unity, some common ground. We break bread together. And we sit down at the table together where we all receive grace because we all equally need it coming before the Father. And so our great Thanksgiving, the words that we say will be a little bit different. And afterwards, uh, myself along with John will come by with the loaf and with the cup. And you can either Use your individual uh, portion, already prepackaged, or you can receive from this. We also have gluten free available. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your, your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church. 
You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the end of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, not only here, Lord, but those who are gathered with us at home. And make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. going to put my mask on now, which means I can no longer speak to you, apparently. Uh, but John will come and he will take this tray and bring it to you. And I bring the cup, or bring the loaf, and we will give it to you in that manner. We'll just come to you. Again, this is a beautiful example of Jesus' table being extended to you exactly where you are. So receive this time. All are welcome.
many of you have already partaken, and that is fine. We take it unified, not only here, but across the world. The body and blood of Christ, given and shed for us. I know we had a little bit of extended time there as we found our way around the room. It was definitely a little bit of a different way to partake in communion. We will continue to find different ways to practice this safely and to practice as a church. Thrilled to be able to participate in communion in this different way. I know we've gone a little bit over. Thank you for the grace this morning. Would you pray with me? And then maybe we'll, we'll just kind of close out with a little bit more. Uh, just if you all would like some quiet time alone as well. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the grace that we have received through your son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for allowing us to come to your table. It is not by our merit. It has nothing to do with who we are, except, Lord, that we, are, we come to the table as yours. That we come to the table as sons and daughters, of a good, good Father that we run to. Lord, we might find ourselves running away from you, running into darkness and running in difficult and, and, and struggles. And, and Lord, you welcome us back. And so God, it's with that grace that we give thanks. We pray all this in Jesus. So this morning, uh, worship is concluded. Uh, if you'd like just another moment, I think we'll just play for another few moments. And then uh, you can exit as you are able. Go in peace.